He was one of the founding scholars of industrial relations in Australia and brought to it a keen economic mind and a public policy interest. Uh, he was, uh, I think, an outstanding member of the uh, uh, conciliation and uh, arbitration system. Well, I would say he made a great professional contribution both at university and uh, subsequently uh, well, as a public servant, but uh, more more importantly, I think, probably later on in the Arbitration Commission. I can't think of anyone else who's made a broader, deeper contribution to public life than Joe across the range of things he's been engaged in. Uh, he's been both an, an outstanding academic and he's made a substantial practical contribution to the field. Uh, so. Uh, I think um, uh, he's just beyond compare. Well, Joe was the first economist, industrial relations academic, to be appointed to the commission. And that gave him an authority and, and uh, a knowledge which assisted the commission greatly. He was always very conscious of the different sides of an argument, the different perspectives. So he's a bit of a born arbitrator anyway. Bob Hawke, who wasn't generally inclined to make uh, positive uh, attributions to other people, credited Joe with much of the thinking behind the Accord, uh, which was also influenced by Swedish uh, and Scandinavian approaches and, and so on. When we were kids, my brother and sister and I knew very little about our father's uh, job. And when we asked him what he did for a living, he told us he was a window cleaner. We said to him, well, what about this office you seem to have at Melbourne University? And he said, there's a lot of windows there. It's an important job. And of course, they give me an office. But he came here, of course, as a student in 1941. He, his father persuaded him to study accountancy. He, he did his degree and then he worked for an accounting accountancy firm, but he found it boring and uh, he was offered a tutorship in economics and he took that and then economics. That became his lifelong interest. He, he was a great intellectual and he, he really was very committed to the equity of the industrial relations system in many ways and, and was good at identifying problems and ways that they could be addressed. And he was a great mentor to the young um, labour specialists and man management people in general. He, they respected him enormously. Well, Joe was one of the most uh, humane, engaging um, and uh, welcoming, inviting person that you're likely, likely to meet. He had lovely values. He was really concerned about the well-being of, uh, of people, including people who were voiceless themselves. And in, into his early 90s, he was on campus contributing. Um, I could see he was always at University House engaging with people and I thought, what a marvellous role model for a public intellectual and uh, just an incredibly generous, decent person. He took an interest in my research and he gave me lots of encouragement to push ahead and get it finished. At the time, I had no idea of the many distinguished contributions he had already made in industrial relations. All I knew was that he was the incredibly polite and friendly person who was still doing his own research after retirement. He had a very good sense of humour and we were preparing a skit for one of the Airans conferences. He did all the filming of this. He was willing to, to do that even though it made him look crazy. <laughs> You really knew that if somebody had upset him because he would describe them as a twerp. That was, <laughs> that was as strong as his language. Yeah. He had this huge career over a long period of time and he was respected by all sorts of people. I mean, you know, Hawk, it's Bob Hawk, etc. He, he just built this large persona. But think about it. There was none of the hype or the salesmanship that goes with people in the present era. He was just kind of Joe. I'd just say it was an honour to, to know him and uh, a privilege indeed to spend you know, so much time with him in his latter years. 